The Genshin Impact version 4.0 livestream has just concluded, and I'm actually pretty stoked on what came from that livestream. Now, there's a lot of information, that's why I not only uploaded just recently my reaction to it, I did want to do this condensed version to really help digest what actually occurred and also give my points on what could happen in future updates because of the implications of certain things and there's a lot to go over so please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified when the next get your impact video comes out and of course leave a comment would love to hear you guys' opinions before we get into that please make sure to check out gamer subs there's a link down in the description below and you can use code taisha to get yourself 10 percent off obviously if you're into waifus like i am it's definitely worth the time. They're a gluten-free, keto-friendly energy supplement that I've been using for a couple years, and I'm really, really stoked on them. I've been, I've been loving their stuff forever. So, but without any further delay, let's go ahead and get right into it. First off, I want to shout out Genshin Mains. I check them out all the time, and they really help with making sure that information is posted and up to date. So, if you all haven't checked out Genshin Mains, please check them out. Let's go ahead and dive in first to the quests. We're obviously getting this Archon quest, and as you can see, we see Furina, uh, Nivellet, uh, Liney, Lynette, Fremnant, and Navia, alongside obviously the Traveler and Paimon, so I'm pretty stoked on that. I like this art because it's really, really cool. We're getting two acts in version 4.0, and a lot of stuff is actually implicated in the story uh, trailer that we saw, and I don't know if it's going to be Lynette on trial or if it's the Traveler on trial, but we're also going to see a lot of fights break out uh, between uh, Child and Nivellet and also Navia and Chlorind. Um, I might be pronouncing those names wrong, so I apologize, but there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm pretty stoked on it. We're also going to be getting a new story quest with Liney. Obviously, we get these with every new five-star character that comes out, so I'm not very surprised by this. But I actually am very intrigued by the siblings here, Liney, Lynette, and Fremnant. So I, I can't wait to see what comes out of those. And then, of course, we also got the banner details, as you can see right here. Uh, part one, or phase one, is going to be Liney and Yelon, which shook me because Yelon... It wasn't too long ago that Yelon came out. Let me pull out my um, uh, Silly Wisher, because I use Silly Wisher to kind of get the, this info right out the gate. Um, let's see, in 3.0, Yelon came out. Oh, maybe it was longer than I thought. I could be, I could just be crazy. Um, because I thought Yelon hadn't been, re or got rerun recently, but it is 3.4, so never mind. Not as recent as I thought, but I'm still surprised that it was Yelon instead of Ganyu, but I do have a theory on that. But first off, let's talk about the phase one banner. Uh, Liney, Yelon, and of course we get Lynette, uh, which is really cool. Lynette seems like uh, they're going to be a character that's used on multiple teams, um, and I can't wait to see what she can do in a lot of those teams. Liney seems like he's going to be a lead for the pyro only meta um, because of what his abilities are, so I'm pretty stoked on that to try that out. Uh, he has a similar ability or charge attack to like, you know, Ganyu, Tainari, uh, Yoimiya. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty stoked on that. And of course, Yelon is just a really good character in general, a very good support DPS or off field DPS. So really, really interested to see that. And then of course we got the part two banner, which was Zhongli and Tartaglia. Um, Zhongli was last rerun. Let me double check on Silly Wisher here. But Zhongli was last rerun, I think at the beginning uh, yes, so beginning of 3.0 alongside uh, what looks to be Ganyu and Kokomi. Um, I, oh wait, no, I think Zhongli got reran alongside Tainari and then Ga Ganyu and Kokomi got their banner. And then the last time Tartagles was in, let me double check that. It's been a little bit since I've seen Tartagles, um, or at least I thought it was, but who knows, I could just be crazy. 3.2, so 3.2 he came out. And of course, Fremnit being the new four star, his kit looks really interesting. I can't wait to try it out because it is a cryo physical mix. But of course, every great sword cryo user is a cryo physical mix. I'm looking at you, Chong Yun. I'm looking at you, Yula. But the reason why I say that this that there's a lot of implications, um, Zhang Li and Ganyu were ran around the same time at 3.0, and I find it interesting that they're running Child, even though Child does take part in the story for 4.0 so i'm pretty stoked on that um but i think that honestly this means that 
with Lantern Rite, Ganyu is probably going to be rerun in Lantern Rite. And why it's important is Ganyu is one of my favorite characters. As you guys know, uh, I have a lot of Ganyu stuff, just for shits and giggles. But I'm also a big fan of Jennifer Losey. She's actually a cool person, great friend of mine. Um, but I find it really interesting that they didn't put Ganyu with Zhongli like they did before. So I'm pretty sure we're going to get Zhang, or not Zhongli, Ganyu and Zhao reran at the same time for Lantern Rite when it comes out. And Ganyu is going to take a precedence in the Lantern Rite. But we're not here to talk about that entirely, just kind of putting out my thoughts as a possibility. Let me know in the comments if you agree. But phase one and phase two of these banners look pretty, pretty dope. Um, I'm not a fan of Tartaglia because, you know, I already have him and I, I don't use him a lot. But he can still do some damage if you're a fan of Tartaglia. I do know, I do know a couple of people who are big fans of uh, Tartaglia. We also got uh, information on the new bosses. This is the new boss, Icewind Sweet, which is a dual boss that like we've gotten in Inko Um, And they have the same typing as Magu Genki, which actually did kind of upset me a little bit because uh, Magu Genki uh, has both the Animo and Cryo element when it splits off into its two. And now we have another boss that's exactly like that. I would have loved to see a little bit of a difference in this boss. Um, I think the dual typing is dope for the boss but i think that they could have done something a little bit different however this boss is going to be really cool i can't wait to fight him and then of course we also got a new boss emperor of fire and iron which is a giant volcano pyro crab yeah that's pretty sick i think that's actually really really cool um the design just looks so dope um so that's really all i could say like i'm pretty so i think this is going to be the boss for liney while this is the boss for uh lynette and Fremenant, so be ready for that. And then of course, we also got details on some enemy slash uh, overworld uh, animals that we see. We got little sea otters, look at them, they're so cute. Uh, we also got this little bird here, uh, he looks pretty sick. And then we got these little birds as well. Um, and as somebody pointed out right under me, uh, Jing Yuen and his bird's secret love child. <laughs> like, it's just funny because it could be a little bit of a nod to uh, Jing Yuen. I don't know if that's the case, but these animals are so cute. I, I love the otters, especially since you're going to be underwater, which it was a big showcase uh, during that. The underwater segment for uh, Genshin Impact 4.0 is actually going to be really basic, but it's going to be kind of built into as time goes on. Um, you don't use stamina when you're underwater, but it's only in the Fontaine area. So uh, a lot of people, or not a lot of people, me, uh, thinking when they said they took out stamina for swimming, I thought it was for the whole thing. It's not. It's only for uh, Fontaine. Um, but yeah, and there's a bunch of different things as well uh, in regards to that. Uh, what, one thing I will actually talk about before we go into anything else. Um, because of how the underwater thing is, they've actually also added on the map as a new thing where if you're scrolling through the map and you need to find like certain layers, it actually sh highlights the layer of the map that you're in for underground. So that's really, really cool, especially when you're going to certain teleport waypoints and you don't know exactly where you're going. So that's a, a new mechanic that they added in, but that I didn't pull up on Twitter. So. We did get uh, information on a new event here, the Mega Mecha Melee, which is the big event for version 4.0. And you do get a free Bennett. There's a lot of multiple uh, side missions. Like we we know how, we know the drill at this point when it comes to events like this. Uh, it's a big overlaying event that has multiple events inside of it that you get currency and all these free stuffs. You get the crowns of insight, uh, primos, character essential materials, level up materials, uh, set sanctifying essences weapon enhancement materials mora character xp and of course free bennett for those of you who are new to genshin or need to get a bennett this is your chance to get them very very good unit in general one of the best four stars in the game so i can't complain and then you pair him alongside with lynette and possibly uh liney you're gonna have a really really decent team so and then of course we got a whole bunch of other events uh, on the side, we got the Relic Records creations of the Hydro Nation. Uh, we also got the Studies in Light and Shadow, a Fontaine of Enchantment, which is an underwater camera event. Uh, and then, of course, Verdict of Blades, which is a uh, event where we're fighting a lot of enemies. Shocker, I know. But with this, we also got the announcement of Leyline Overflow coming back. So that's pretty neat. I do dig that. Um, 
it's gonna be a lot of grinding especially right now since we're going into fontaine and there's gonna be all these different um things that we have to farm to get these characters ready so i'm pretty pumped we also got news that we are getting a free Lynette. And I think that is honestly what they should be doing almost every update. If you're going to get putting out a new four star, I think that you should at least give a free four star every now and again. And we're getting two. We're getting a free Bennett and we're getting a free Lynette. Uh, if you reach uh, Adventure Rank 25, you just get her automatically, which I think is really cool in general. Um, and again, with how her kit looks, I think that honestly she might be a, a game changer in regards to the animo set but who knows i could be wrong on that don't don't take my word as gospel this is just me thinking um we also got new battle pass and or not new battle pass but new battle pass weapons and we're going from five to ten so we do obviously get our original five star weapons alongside the new ones and the reason being if you have been like me and you've bought the battle pass every single time honestly unless you mess up like me where i got another deathmatch by accident you could r5 every single weapon by this update so it made sense for them to add new battle pass weapons and they look so cool i can't wait to dive into them and understand them a little bit more because they look sick they actually look very very cool um of course we also got new artifacts with golden trope and the mare chausi hunter i can, i probably messed that up i'm gonna call it m hunter because i think m hunter makes more sense for me and i don't want to look like an idiot but these sets kind of go into a little bit more of a different perspective if that makes sense uh i can't remember exactly which set does what but one of the, i think it's the m hunter does uh normal charge attack damage increase on the two piece and the two piece for golden trope is about skill damage so they're going into a different meta with these and i'm really stoked for that i think it's a different aspect and you could go you could basically integrate these into different characters and it would make sense so pretty stoked on that the biggest thing for me was this the party screen now the new party screen is different as you know they would just t-pose like that but now they don't they actually have their own animations within the party screen and when you're looking through the character screens i'm going to be doing a video probably later this week on that um as of the recording of this video or as of the release of this video whatever but i'm going to be doing a video where we talk about those different animations and kind of go over how cool they look so I'm pretty stoked on that. I think that's really, really sick that they did this. And it wasn't something that was entirely needed, but it was so, it's something that I think is so cool that it's going to give people a new light to it, I guess. And it's gonna be one of those things to be like, oh, what's the new entrance animation for this character gonna look like? So uh, Raiden Shogun, as this person uh, said, keeps eating because her showcase looks so cool. And then of course, this was something that wasn't touched on inside the stream but i think it needed to be mentioned um so we are getting strong box updates for the following artifacts uh tenacity of the millilith pale flame shimanawa's uh reminiscence emblem of severed fate husk of opulent dreams ocean hued clam vermilion hereafter and echoes of an offering which is pretty significant i honestly didn't think that they were going to add vermilion and echoes but i was very excited because i knew they would put in emblem of severed fate but I'm not complaining because I think Vermilion and Echoes being in there is not a bad move. Um, Vermilion is not really used too much, it seems, by a lot of uh, characters. Uh, Zhao, I believe, uses Vermilion as its top as its top set, but I don't see a lot of other characters using Vermilion. Um, but not only that, but our artifact inventory limit is going from 1500 to 1800, which is pretty freaking big. I think that's actually a good move. I think they need to keep on updating the inventory limits, especially since now we have so many characters. And if you're like me and you're farming specific sets for each character, you're going to need multiple uh, artifacts. So it makes the most sense. Overall, from what it seems like, Genshin Impact 4.0 is going to be a lot of fun. I'm I'm stoked on it because I want to know this story. The the story trailer itself had me hooked because I there were so many things that were going on. And if you saw the trailer beforehand when Arlek Chino was a part of it, like you know there's a lot more to the story than meets the eye. So I'm super pumped for this and I hope you all are as well. And with that, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys like the content, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Genshin Impact video comes out. 
And again, thank you all so much for all the support. We are so close to getting partner on YouTube. We are at like 2,083 hours watched with only, we're at like as of this recording, 871 subscribers. So please, I beg of y'all, help me out with this. It would be amazing. It would mean the world to me. But anyways, that's gonna be it, y'all. Thank you so much. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.